Hey kiddos, let's go over our answers for this week. For our purposes, I have the answers already typed in because I want to really focus more on what we're putting into that calculator because we are using a calculator for this unit and using our um, formulas correctly. So for our first one, we are talking about tax. Now remember, tax is in addition to. Your total should be increasing. If your total is not increasing, you're making a mistake. So the first thing we're going to do for these is we are going to write the percent as a decimal. Remember, a one digit looks like this. I don't like how thick that is. Okay, so we're going to multiply zero and four hundredths times 125. When we do that, we get our $5 tax. When we add them together, because tax is in addition, we end up with a total of 130. For this one, we move that decimal two times. We have decimal 095, 95 thousandths times $25. When we do that, we get $2.38 tax. When we add that to our total, we have a total of $27.38. Again, moving our decimal two times to the left, we have 58 thousandths times $23.50 gives us a tax amount of $1.32, gives us a total of $24.82. Now remember, if by chance you did not move your decimal far enough on this one, take a second and look at your tax amount and ask yourself, does this make sense? Because if I moved the decimal only once and I multiplied it by 0.56 or 56 hundredths, I would get a tax amount of $13.16. And if I ask myself, does it make sense that only 5.6% tax would give me a total that is over half of my bill? That should be a red flag, right? That should be in my brain saying, okay, I made a mistake there. I need to be careful. 6% tax, move it over twice, add your zero, get tax of $8.10 when you multiply 6% tax times $135 added it together, we have $143.10 total. 4% tip on $150 gives us $6 tax, added $156 total. And again, with this one, we move it over twice, add that zero, gives us $1.88 tax, $76.88 total. Couple of reminders here, it's money. Round it when you need it, okay? And write it with money. I want to see dollar signs. I want to see decimals. Okay. All right. On to our continuation of calculating tax. This time I added in tax and tip. Stay on your toes. Remember that we tip on the total amount. So if we went to dinner and our bill was $170 plus $7, or I'm sorry, plus seven and three or 7.3% tax, they're not going to give us our bill and ask us to determine our tax, right? Our bill is going to come to us with the total. It'll show you what the amount was pre-tax. It'll show you what the amount was after tax, but it's going to give you your overall total. So make sure that when you tip, you're tipping on the total amount. So over here, I said calculate and add the tax before finding the tip. Next time you're out with your grownups and you go somewhere, ask them to look at the receipt and you'll see what I mean. You have what's called your subtotal, which would be where this $170 is. You have your tax, and then it puts it all together for you, okay? So when we do the tax, when we multiply these two numbers, we get $12.41. I'm going to add that to my $170, okay? Then I'm going to get my, my tip. When I do $170 plus $12.41, I get a total of, sorry, I should have calculated this before. I get a total of $182.41. That is what I am tipping off of, okay? My tip is $27.36. When I add that to this amount, I get $209.77. So if yours is off a little bit, you probably determined your tax and tip both off of the $170 and then totaled them, okay? So I add a tax of $9.18. When I add that to my total and tip, $32.44 is my tip. 
when I add the total plus the tax and the tip, I get $194.62. Over here, this is what I spent, 6% tax, looks like that. I get a tax of $12.95. After I add that to my total, my 7% tip is $16.01. Add all three together, I get $231.76. Over here, I'm charged $140. When I add on my tax, I get an additional $6.02. When I add those together for tip, I tip $33.12. Gives me a total of $179.14. This one tried to trick you. I did because I told you that a hotel room costs $134 a night plus 5% tax, but I stayed for three nights. So that means the cost of my hotel room is $402. I got that by doing 134 times three, okay? So the tax on my $402 stay is $20.10. When I add these together, my tip is $12.66. My total is $434.76. So if you got an answer under 200, you missed that it was a three night stay. All right, breakfast came to $43.12, gives me a tax of $1.72, a tip of $7.17, and a total of $52.01. Let's take a look at some interest, my friends. Put your interest formula here for you. Remember that we're taking the principal, the amount that I'm putting in the account, I'm multiplying it by the interest rate, and how long it is staying there, okay? If we just do principal times interest, we're gonna find out the interest rate for one year, but for almost all of these, we're sitting it there for longer, okay? So we're gonna take our total, times it by the interest, and two years, we have an interest rate of, or an interest amount of $220.92. That means at the end, our total amount in the account is $1,792.92. I'm taking my amount, multiplying it by my interest, and time in years, two years, 24 months is two years. When I do that, I get an interest rate of $1,186.68, which means my total after two years is $11,974.68. I'm putting in principal $12,500, an interest rate of 4.5% for four years. I have $2,250 of interest and I have $14,750 in the account at the end of those four years. Over here, I'm putting in my principal balance for 8% interest and eight years. $3,497.60 interest for a total of $8,962.60. Here, my principal is $2,232, 4% interest for five years. I have $446.40 in interest, a total of $2,678.40 as my total amount. Last one for this page. Take my principal times my interest and my years. After nine years, I have $2,160.87 in interest for a total of $5,449.87. All right, on to our last page where we are just calculating interest. We are still using that same formula. So I have a principal of $1,800. It's sitting there at 5.4% interest for three years. $291.60 in interest, $2,091.60 in total. I'm depositing $22,809 in an account with 6% interest. 36 months is three years. You're going to notice with a lot of financial things, they will tell you months, especially car loans is an example of something that you'll probably see sooner than later. Um, when you buy a car, if you don't buy it outright, if you finance it, it's going to tell you how long in months, not years. So we need to be able to flip back and forth pretty fluidly. Remember 12 months is a year. So divide it by 12. That will give you your amount. When we calculate this, we have $4,105 and 62 cents in interest and $26,914 and 62 cents in total. I'm depositing my principal 
162. Oh my goodness. 3% interest, two years, $369.72 interest, $6,531.72 total after two years. This one, depositing my principal at 9% interest for two years, I have $1,420.38 interest and total after two years is $9,311.38. All right, making my deposit at 4% interest for four years, $761.58 in interest, $4,992.58 in total. Last one on this page. 7% interest for three years, $1,220.94 in interest, $7,034.94 in total. Questions with these, please bring them with you to class. Otherwise, on to the word problems starring you guys. Let's see what you got into recently. So Peyton invested $7,500 in an account for two years and earned 5% interest. How much money did she have available to buy her first car? So Peyton's principal times her interest times the two years she patiently waited, gave her $750 in interest and a total of $8,250 towards her first car. Dory and Liz are trying to save enough money to open the Don't Sleep Cafe. They put $3,500 in an account for 7% interest and three years. How much will they have to open their cafe? Well, they've earned $735 in interest for $4,235 in total. Adisa created a food-inspired clothing line called Let's Talk Go About Fashion and invested her first $20,000 for two years at a 4% interest rate. How much does she have to reinvest in her company after the time has passed? She has $1,600 of interest. She has $21,600 in total to invest back into Talk Go About Fashion. Imran and Charity invested $50,000 in a startup company. They were paid 10% interest after five years. If they split the payout, how much does each person get? Make sure you caught that part because that is important. They are splitting this. So after five years, they have $25,000 in interest. When we add that to their startup, that's $75,000, but it's split, which means each person gets $37,500. Congratulations on your success. We have Elka. Elka wanted to invest her earnings from selling her award-winning pig to be able to purchase more piglets. She put $350 in a 4% earning account for two years. How much does she have to reinvest in her farm? So we're taking the amount she invested times the interest earned in two years. She will have $28 in interest, $378 total to invest back into her farm. And then finally, Ava and Sabbath decided to save their summer earnings to go on an amazing tour of Italy. They each put $750 in an account earning 4.5% interest for a year, just one year. If they put their money together, how much is available for their trip? So be careful, $750 times their interest for a year, they each have $33.75, but when we combined them, they have a total of $1,567.50 because remember, after investing each girl, let me change my color so you can see it, has $783.75 when they put that together. That's where this total comes from. As always with word problems, read carefully. That brings us to the end of our review for this week. If you have questions, bring them with you to class.